the calm of the concert belies any hint of discord between the German and Turkish leaders. But in the salons of Brussels and the chancelleries of Europe, there is growing unease at Angela Merkel's bilateral diplomacy. One newspaper calls it Merkel's myopia, Europe's German question. Some European foreign ministers think the EU strategy with Russia in particular is being compromised by Germany's direct talks with the Kremlin. But in a 27-member EU, isn't this inevitable? It's like herding cats. There is no consensus. So what's left is either all foreign policy is paralyzed or individual countries go off on their own. Colin Chapman welcoming you to Agenda with George Friedman. Germany is facing the fundamental question of the European Union, which is how does Germany benefit from it? Uh, during the times of prosperity, everyone benefited from the European Union, Germany included. Germany is now facing the possibility that it may have to underwrite some of the mistakes and decisions made by other regimes, Greece in particular, but others as well. And the Germans are asking the question, what is the value of remaining in the European Union? Uh, certainly it's not being put that radically, and certainly no one is in position of power is seriously contemplating being outside of it, but they're looking at what other relationships they should have. A very senior Swedish politician, one who might be foreign minister by the end of this year, complained to me that Merkel was bypassing the EU in matters of foreign policy. Well, it's very difficult to involve the EU. I mean, there is the secretariat of the EU, but they have very little power over what happens. To move the EU in any direction, you've got to negotiate with a lot of different regimes having very different interests. And what you see happening in Europe is the reemergence of nationalism, not necessarily in its own virul old virulent form, but in a new form, uh, a very rational form, a form that says that there are European interests, there are German interests, and they're not always the same. And of course it said that it was Merkel who blocked Tony Blair as president of the EU in favor of the relatively little known von Rumpy. I really think it's a mistake to look at this in terms of personalities. The point is, institutionally, the office has no power. Uh, it can compel no country to raise an army. It can make threats to no foreign power. It can make no treaties that any of the member countries are obliged to follow. Essentially, we have to face the fact that the European Union is a customs union with a layer of regulation placed over it. The member states don't have to follow the regulations if they ultimately don't want to. And from Moscow's perspective, it's ideal. It can just divide and rule. Well, I don't think it has to play the game of divide. Europe has managed to divide itself very nicely. But it does have the opportunity to deal with the United States in a very interesting way. The United States, under both Bush and Obama, have been the most assertive about the right of the United States to maintain bilateral relations with countries like Georgia, the Ukraine, uh, the Baltic states, all former Soviet Union uh, members. The Russian response is to reach into the American alliance structure, badly weakened over the years, and speak to a country like Germany and entice it into relations where not much enticement is needed, Germany needs Russia as well. And that creates a complexity for any American plans. So I think that Russia's view of Germany is one, that relationship is valuable in its own right. But I also think that when Russia thinks of the advantages of reaching out to Germany, it is less interested in dividing Europe than in dividing Europe from the United States. In fact, the Russians would hope that the Germans would bring along many of the European continental powers into a relationship with Russia. Now a quick look at what else is on the agenda next week. In Thailand, protest groups continue mass demonstrations, while Vietnam's Prime Minister is visiting Myanmar. Monday sees two important dialogue, in Tbilisi between NATO and Georgian ministers, and in Seoul between the foreign ministers of Korea and China. On Tuesday, there's a national rail strike in Britain and possibly in France. Britain's Prime Minister Gordon Brown is expected to call elections. Across the Channel, President Nicolas Sarkozy will be meeting Turkey's Prime Minister. On Wednesday, Russia's President Dmitry Medvedev will be in Slovakia, then goes on to Prague, where he and President Barack Obama will sign the new START treaty. 
Poland's Donald Tusk and other East European leaders will be there for talks also. There's a summit of ASEAN in Hanoi and the weekends with a meeting of Russia and Ukrainian foreign ministers in Kiev to figure out how both countries can work closer together. That's Stratfor's agenda. Thanks for being with us.